Jane, I wonder if you could tell us about the challenges and rewards of being a business school dean? Well, I think the two greatest challenges now that we have are one, the market, and mm -hmm. trying to position one's school in the market um, in a sustainable way. And that's actually very difficult because the competitive landscape is just yeah. absolutely fierce at the moment. Um, and it's not just that there's more competitors, but the whole relationship um, of students with higher education is also changing with employers and other stakeholders with higher education is changing, not just in the UK, but globally. And so it's really kind of trying to, to find the right, the right place um, yeah. and where the narrative of the school just gets the most traction. So that's one, one big challenge. And then I think the second challenge is bringing the school with you um, mm -hmm. and getting the kind of changes that you need, whether that's in working practices, whether that's in curriculum, whether that's in recruiting practices, um, trying to get those changes to enable and facilitate progress to, to happen. And I think that depends, well, that's certainly a challenge for me given that we're a business school in a bigger university, but probably standalone business schools would have that challenge slightly different, yeah. um, slightly differently. But and for rewards, us, that's how it plays rewards out. Rewards of the job? Well, the rewards of the job are that it's, first of all, it's absolutely fascinating. It's by far the most interesting job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. It's extremely varied. Um, and you're operating at a strategic level one minute, a representative level one minute, a tactical and operational level one minute. Mm -hmm. And you can really influence change quite significantly. And I think that's, that's fun. Good. So if you enjoy that type of aspect, it's, um, it's yeah. very, very rewarding. And what about the external aspects? How much time do you pay? Well, I think it's interesting. I think different deans probably take different approaches. Some deans are very much the the representative of their school externally completely. Um, I try and delegate some of that out because I think the more people we have yeah. um, that are engaging in different levels, the better. Um, I even have a pro dean external, um, which sort of helps us to, to achieve that. But um, there are some areas where being, you know, the dean really does help open some of the doors. And it's a question of finding out where the biggest added value is mm -hmm. to have the dean there versus, say, a particular type of researcher or versus someone who's an expert in a, in a particular field. So it's really just playing, um, playing that and figuring out where you can get the biggest bang for your buck um, externally. Because otherwise, you could, sp you could easily spend your entire life in conferences. Mm -hmm. um, but that actually means that you can't then do the leadership role that you need to do um, back at back at the ranch, so to speak. Okay. And how do you manage your own diary and your own personal sense of balance and energy levels? Well, actually, I should have said that managing the diary is probably one of the biggest challenges. Okay. <laughs> um, and this is where we've got Microsoft Outlook to yeah. think, um, because there's so many people that can now take things in and out of my diary that um, right. sometimes it can be quite bewildering to know uh -huh. where you're supposed to be at what time. So the diary management is actually quite difficult. And I, the, the trick to that is just to be you know, really absolutely disciplined about it. Um, and to make sure that um, you actually carve out time mm -hmm. and diarize that time to do some of the big pieces of work that you might have to do that would just otherwise um, float away. And I think in terms of the personal work-life balance, that's another area which mm. you need to spend time on. It, it, you have to consciously spend time on it, I think is what I'm trying to get at, rather than just working away and hoping it will regulate itself. I mean, I think um, in this day and age with the demands of the job, um, and usually I think for women deans as well, have some particular challenges in that often, um, you do need to have a very, very clear way of prioritizing your time and your activities and making sure that you, you do have time for everything. It's achievable, but you have to work at it. Okay. And finally, how do you keep people on track in terms of strategic priorities? Um, that is tricky, and I think the best way to do it is just to communicate as much as possible, first of all, what those strategic priorities are, mm -hmm. um, but also to have people engaged in the constant dialogue and debate, which shifts and changes and um, yeah. explores those strategic priorities and refines them. So it's a dialogue that's happening all the time, mm -hmm. not necessarily formally, um, though sometimes people do prefer that because they can opine and then leave the formal environment and um, hope for the best. But it's something that happens and grows dynamically, I think. Um, but it's communication. It's trying as much as possible all the time to be talking about what the strategic challenges are, what are some of the ways 
to go about meeting them, to not be afraid of experimentation, mm -hmm. um, trying things and then abandoning them if they don't work, um, and really kind of trying to constantly keep everybody aboard, which can be tricky, but, yeah. um, but if you communicate enough, it, it is possible. Okay, that's great, thank you. Thank you.